Hello world, this is Chris with Elevations. I'm going to do a talk through for one of our other local robotics teams. Uh, the coach has just sent me a picture of their robot, and that's what we're looking at here. So let's uh, start editing this and have some comments about it. If anybody has any comments about anything else that they see that could be improved, I'm sure the team would certainly appreciate that. So without further ado, let's look at this robot. All right, let's take a look, see here at Addison's robot. So first, let's look at this motor right here that comes in and drives this medium gear coming down to a smaller gear you see we have this transfer axle that takes that power and brings it over to this side large gear down to a very small gear so we have the gear ratio that brings us down to a high rpm here for our flywheel now one of the main issues let's take a look at this right here there's no structure Okay, so one of the problems that I would see is you're going to have a lot of wobble up and down here. And especially once you start having this under load, these two gears will want to push away from each other. And this axle, let's see if we could do this. That axle right there is going to want to move. So that's going to want to move up and down especially when we start getting all the pushback from these teeth as this thing spins this axle is going to want to come up and because there's no support right here it's going to be allowed to do so now it won't necessarily disconnect from these teeth but we will have a lot of power loss right here because this is not properly supported so one thing now i understand we do have that 11 inch limit from left to right so something that you could do is take this motor here flop it over to this side and if you mount that here with the axle going outward this way and then we do more structure on the outside then we create a nice little gearbox system between these two structures now this structure we have for the drivetrain is really nice just expand on that come over and then you create a nice gearbox system that way you can have the axle coming from your motor through the other supporting structure piece and then have your gearbox system down here so you can have that come all the way down you can still hit that transfer axle if you need to or you potentially could have that gearing come out and then just simply have your gear mesh coming down to your final flywheel down here. Now one thing to keep in mind is you do not have any flywheel weights on this flywheel. When you have those motors uh, spin in here and then you have the pucks that will drop down into it, every time a puck hits your flywheel you're going to have a loss of RPM. That means it's going to start spinning slower. So the first puck that goes through will go at a decent speed and a decent distance potentially getting you in that four point zone. But because of that uh, centrifugal uh, speed or your RPM loss, your second and third and fourth shots potentially could be in the three point and two point zone. You definitely don't want that. So the more weight you have on the outside spinning, the better uh, consistency you'll have with this flywheel. So if you throw some flywheel weights on there, that's going to make a big difference. And I'm not sure what you have between these, but you definitely want to have some good support. Uh, so this axle that goes through here is not only relying on that small piece of plastic so we'll just draw this right here so there's the axle right there now you have that little square that's in the inside of these so the vex iq stuff is all plastic based on this uh, wheel and a lot of times especially when you're shooting you'll have some wobbling that will occur in that plastic so that creates a little bit of a weakness uh, one thing you can either do is usually use uh, those plastic square pieces that have a square in the center or if you interconnect the holes between all these motors you can use uh, say you can even use a, a couple handful of axles that actually will go through all of them so you have more weight on the inside of that as well. Or you could use just simple pins that connect this one to this one, then this one to this one, then this one to this one, this one to this one. So that way you have a, a consistent flywheel and you don't rely only on the primary axle you have right in here so you definitely want to reinforce this as much as we can 
Ideally, we create a proper gearbox system on the side. So if you flip again your motor back over to here, mount this on the two by and then create a nice square system here. And then all of your gearing can be housed in this space once you make that nice little gearbox. And then we come down to the issue of needing to be able to uh, set something up for your actual purple spinner. So one thing you definitely would want to do is have another axle or right around this area uh, that will house your purple spinner. So you're not relying only on your flywheel to do everything. And then that way you can do a sprocket system on the side. So you just say we have sprockets over here and then we'll run rubber bands between them. So you do a rubber band, you do a rubber band, and then potentially you can even do some structure on the inside of that to give it some core rigidity, but the outside gives you some flex. So when you approach and start engaging with purple, uh, you'll have a little bit of a give way. Uh, and then you do want to keep your gearing even between the flywheel and the purple uh, interaction on that rubber bands here that way this is spinning in the shooting direction while the thing that interacts with purple will be spinning in the opposite direction uh, so you do not have to spend any power or time switching the direction of your shooter you want your shooter basically to be turned on ready to shoot have this purple spinner running at the exact same time. You pull everything off of purple, back up, make a 90 degree turn, and you can start shooting right there without having to do any change of direction, any power loss, any of that. So that is basically everything that I have about this. We'll show you some of the other examples off of our robot, and we can look at that and how they accomplish that. That would be Team 2048H. Let's see what they Okay, so here we have 2048H. This is a robot reveal video we did a little while ago. Notice how they have the flywheel moving as well as that purple interaction device there with the rubber bands right above that spinning at the same time. So they are spinning in opposite directions. You can see that with that gearing system and they have moved that motor a little bit to the rear uh, as well as uh, off the side. So it's entirely out of the way. This is a good view of their shaker and that's what they had. Thanks 2048H. And that's everything I have for you right now. Hopefully you'll be able to learn something. You can potentially rebuild that gear system, be able to make it so both your purple interaction device as well as your flywheel are spinning at the exact same time, but in opposite directions. So you don't have to spend any time changing your direction. You can achieve that much more points. And hopefully we will see you in our division at Worlds. Good luck, Addison. Looking forward to see you next time you make it in for our practice. Have a great day. Please like and subscribe below. And as always, thank you for watching.